Over the last few weeks, we've seen major new releases for both Angular and Firebase, and that has resulted in Angular Fire version 5.2. And it contains a whole bunch of new features that you may have not been expecting. In today's video, we'll look at five brand new features in Angular Fire and how they can help simplify your Angular Firebase project. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find the full write-up on Fireship.io. The first new feature you should be aware of are the new schematics that make it easy to add Angular Fire to an existing project and then deploy it to Firebase hosting. All we have to do is run ng add Angular Fire and then select a corresponding Firebase project. That will install the necessary dependencies and also initialize Firebase in this project. And another cool thing is that it hooks into the new builder API in Angular 8, which allows us to run a command to deploy this project to Firebase hosting. In other words, you can go from zero to a deployed app with just two commands. The next new feature you should be aware of is the integration of Firebase performance. I already have an entire video on this topic, and adding Firebase Perf to your project is pretty much a no-brainer. But Angular Fire is not just a wrapper for performance, it extends it with additional functionality specifically for RxJS. You can get basic performance reporting with a single line of code, or you can use one of the custom RxJS operators to run a manual trace. This makes it really easy to measure the performance of things like HTTP calls, because all you have to do is pipe in this custom operator and everything else happens for you automatically. The third new feature is my favorite, and that's because I wrote the code for it. And it's just a new option on value changes when listening to the value of a document or collection. The option is called ID field, and it allows you to return the document ID in addition to the document data. When working with Firestore, you often need the document data to show in the UI, and then you need the ID itself to make updates or writes to the database. But combining the document ID with the data is an overly complex process in my opinion. Value changes returns an observable that emits a JavaScript object or an array of objects. The ID field argument is optional, and it will return the document ID mapped to a specific property on the object. So this allows you to specify the property name for the ID so you don't accidentally overwrite some underlying data that's already on the document. So the end result is less complexity and fewer lines of code in your front-end applications. Now, the next feature that we'll look at is the collection group query, which is new in Firebase version 6. This feature is also covered in detail in its own video, but it's something you should definitely be aware of because it adds a ton of flexibility to data modeling in Firestore. In Angular Fire, the usage looks like this, where we have a reference to a collection group that will group all the collections in the database with that same name making it possible to run queries across all the data contained in all the subcollections with that same name. Now I saved the best for last, and that is the Angular Fire AuthGuard module. If you've ever built something like role-based authorization in an Angular Firebase app, there's a good chance that you have a lot of complex code living in your router guards. Apps that have a lot of custom authorization logic typically need to lock down specific routes based on a user's role or authorization level. The most simple use case is when you want to lock down a route based on whether or not a user is logged in. We can now easily handle that logic by simply dropping in the Angular Fire AuthGuard to can activate on the routes that we want to apply it to. But what if we want to redirect the user to the login page if this guard resolves to false? The guard module provides a can activate helper method that allows us to pass in a custom RxJS operator. And there's a bunch of built-in operators for the most common situations, like redirecting an unauthorized user to a different route, and you can even do the opposite of redirecting a logged in user to a new route. And if the built-in functions aren't enough for you, you can actually build your own because they're just custom RxJS operators under the hood. And a custom RxJS operator is just a JavaScript function. We'll go ahead and create our own auth pipe, which is a function that should return an observable of a Boolean or an array of strings if we want to redirect the user to a new route. We can easily do this by using the RxJS map operator, and its callback function will give us access to the Firebase user, which we can use to determine whether or not this user is authorized to visit this route. For the Jeff guard, we're going to make sure that the user's display name contains the substring of Jeff. And now we can use this logic by simply combining it with the can activate helper. So overall, the AuthGuard module provides a much simpler and concise way to write authorization logic with the Angular router. In most cases, all the hard work will be done for you, but if you want to implement your own custom logic, it's just a matter of writing a function. Overall, Angular version 5.2 adds a ton of new functionality and does a lot of things to help simplify your code. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io to get access to even more content. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.